Shabbat Shalom to everyone. It's so nice. It's like every, every blessing that we give, any Amidah, most of our big prayers, the, if we say a Kaddish, it always ends with a prayer for peace. And it feels, uh, it feels distant, and it also feels more important than ever. And as I was looking at our Parsha this week, Vayera, the opening scene of the Parsha is familiar to us in our tradition in many different ways. It's Avraham sitting at the opening of his tent with three people who are walking by, angels, people, and he invites them in. And this is the first act that we really see of Hachnasat Orchim, of welcoming guests, and he goes above and beyond. He and Sarai, his wife, are running around doing everything they can to welcome these guests and to give us this sense of who we are as a people. It's that we are people who are welcoming. We are people who are open. We are open to those who we don't know, the stranger, the ones who are in need, the passerby who is in need of food or water or shelter. And Avraham models this so beautifully. And then we get another scene in our parasha. And this is the scene of Stoam and Amorah, where it's a wicked and evil city and things are terrible there. And Avraham once again goes there and is trying to actually save the city. God says, I'm going to destroy this whole city. And Avraham says, please don't do that. Maybe there are 50 good people here, righteous people here. Maybe there are 50, and then there's a bargaining act between God and Avraham back and forth. Maybe 45, and Avraham can't find 45. Maybe 30, 30, 35, 30, 20, and he goes down and down and down. He gets to 10, and he still can't find any, which at that point, the city is destroyed. And the rabbis in the Gemara, as I was learning and looking through, they asked the question of what was so bad? What was so bad about the people of these two cities that caused them to be destroyed? And actually in this list in in the rabbinic text says that they also don't merit anything in the world to come, that they have a punishment in this world and in the next world. And they give a list of all of the different things that the people there were doing that were evil and that caused this place to be such a disgrace and such an upsetment and an injustice to God and to the world. And so it says, these people took all the good that they had and they turned it into bad. And so the first thing that they had is they looked at the bread that came from the earth. They looked at the food that they had, quite literally looking at the wheat, and they said, how lucky are we that we have all of this wheat Why should we share this with travelers or people who are coming by? Why should we have to share it with anyone outside of ourselves? We don't want to give it to them. If they come here, all they're going to do is take from us and take what we have. The next reason that we're told is that the people there were selfish. If anybody had a row of bricks and somebody would come and would say, oh, I'm just going to take one brick, you shouldn't be upset by the fact that I'm taking one brick. And someone else would come and take one brick and say, oh, it's it's so, it's so minor, I'm just taking one, until all the bricks were gone from that individual and they didn't have anything. The same would go for food, once again, that example, a selfishness. It then goes on to say that there were four judges there and in the language, it's it's fascinating, the names of the judges are a play on on the words. So you have a shakrai, which is a liar, and you have someone who is a who's twisting the truth or the justice of it. So the four of these judges in this, these two towns, they used to judge unjustly. They would give cases and they would say things that made no sense and that didn't bring justice into the world, but rather took justice outside and ruined the system and ruined the way that people were able to trust each other and live in community. And the next one says that if travelers came and they needed to fit inside of their beds, that they would either, if they were too small, they would stretch them out, physically stretch them out to fit the bed, or if they were too large, they would cut them, or they would hurt them, harm them in some way to scrunch them into the bed. And in this, it makes it sound like everyone needs to fit one size. It's one size fits all. We don't want any difference here. We don't want anyone who looks different than us, who feels different than us, we're selfish, we're not, we're not just in the way that we use our systems. 
we don't want to invite anybody in, unlike Avraham, who we saw in the beginning. And then we get to the last two examples, which are incredibly painful. The first is that if anyone was poor and would come to Sdom and Amorah, all the people would give them a dinar. They would give them some money, but they would write their names on it. And then when the person who was poor and in need of food would go to the store to buy some bread, the storekeeper wouldn't allow them to buy any bread with these coins that had the names on it until this person died, and then all of the people would come and take their money back from this person. And the last one is that if somebody was poor, nobody was meant to help them. And it gives an example of a woman who was compassionate and who realized that there was somebody on the streets who was in need of food, and so she actually would hide food and bread in her pitcher, and she would walk through the streets and she would bring the bread to this person who was in need and the people started to think, how is this person surviving? What's keeping them going? And they realized that this woman was providing the bread, and so they punished her, and they killed her. And this is the place in which this week's Parsha says was destroyed, that Avraham tried so desperately to find good people, to find people who were righteous, to find people who had seichel, who had some semblance of what this world needs to be, some form of justice, some form of giving and kindness and peace. And it feels just so relevant to our world. It feels so relevant to what we fear, what we fear could happen. And it also feels perfect for this Shabbat to say to us, be one of the tzadikim. Be one of those righteous people. Be one of the 10, one of the 20, one of the 30, 35, 45, 50 people. It doesn't matter what's happening. Each person counts. Each one of us counts. And what it means to count is to be open, to be kind, to be willing to see those who are in need and to help them despite what the atmosphere around us might be, despite the selfishness, despite even the systems that we have in place that might try to push against that, don't give up. Don't forget who you are. And that's exactly what Shabbat is. Every single week is that reset for us. It's that coming back to those values, coming back to the idea of saying, we are Avraham. At the very beginning of the parasha, we are the ones who want to open our hearts to the stranger. We want to open ourselves to kindness. We want to go above and beyond in our world because it actually makes a difference. That's what it means to be a part of these people. That is the founder, Abraham and Sarai. They're the founders of who we are as a people. And so as we go into the Shabbat, Veira, and especially as we continue with Mari, this moment when we accept Shabbat upon us, when we welcome in Shabbat in its fullness and in its wholeness, may it crack open our hearts. May it give us the strength and the courage to be that hope and that light that our world so desperately needs. Shabbat shalom.